My name is Olugunro Bello, reaching you from Lagos, Nigeria. And I am Amal Bukman. We are Ilea Komoloabi, promoting African development through the restoration of African philosophy, culture, and values in the Yoruba tradition. We're excited to begin our conversation here today with our honored guest, Dr. Joseph Inikori. Professor Inikori teaches history at the University of Rochester. He has a PhD, he is a PhD graduate from the University of Ibadan. His research and teaching interest centers on the evolution of current global economic order from the 16th century. This interest has developed for him into the study of the global impact of the transatlantic slave trade. He has written a number of books and articles, including Africans in the Industrial Revolution in England. Of particular interest to us today is a chapter he wrote in Fighting the Slave Trade, West African Strategies, called The Struggle Against the Transatlantic Slave Trade, The Role of the State. It is our pleasure to have Dr. Inikori with us here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Um, professor, um, so last year, uh, Ghana celebrated the Year of Return, a commemoration of first enslaved Africans we brought to the 13 colonies. So well, this was a single marker for Black Americans and uh, was quite moving for those who were able to make the trip. Um, but we want, to, we want you to tell us, when was the first recorded event of slaves being taken to the West? And I mean, how did it occur, sir? Uh, the, the, the very first uh, export of, uh, if I may use uh, the word export, which is really not the uh, right word, uh, by the Portuguese in uh, 1441. Uh, these uh, were people uh, who were actually uh, seized. It, it wasn't a matter of trade. Uh, at these uh, small coastal villages uh, in Senegambia uh, were invaded uh, by the Portuguese uh, and they seized uh, these um, uh, uh, unprotected uh, 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 fellows and they were then uh, taken uh, to um, uh, 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 Portugal. Uh, that was the very, very first. Uh, 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 1441. Thank you for that. So, in evaluating the conditions of West Africa and Central nations who became entangled and slave, your study brought you to the development of serfdom in Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. Can you elaborate this for the audience? What is serfdom? What were the conditions in Europe that caused it to develop? And in what way do you see any kind of similarities between that and slavery that Africans experience? Uh, Sethdom is uh, just um, one uh, category uh, of uh, unfree people. Uh, it's a form of servitude. Uh, the difference between uh, uh, the serfs uh, and slaves uh, is simply that uh, serfs uh, had uh, far more freedom. Uh, they, 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 they served uh, their lords, uh, they, they produced for themselves, uh, but uh, had to uh, surrender uh, a portion of uh, their uh, output. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, a payment uh, to their lords uh, in kind, uh, also rendering uh, free labor. But uh, other than that, uh, they produced uh, for themselves and had uh, far more freedom uh, to take care of, uh, of their families uh, as compared uh, with slaves uh, who uh, really uh, had uh, very, very uh, little freedom. Uh, Slaves, uh, we are not allowed uh, to produce for themselves as such, uh, even though uh, generally speaking, uh, they were uh, allocated uh, what uh, we often uh, describe uh, as um, uh, a small plots, uh, uh, subsistence plots. Uh, they cultivated uh, in their free uh, times, uh, usually Sunday, 
uh, in order to uh, produce uh, some part of their own subsistence. Uh, in other words, uh, helping their owners because generally yeah, these were people uh, not having the freedom uh, to produce for themselves. Uh, they had to be uh, fed, uh, food uh, distributed uh, to the slaves, uh, clothing uh, also were uh, provided uh, by the slave owners. So that's the major difference uh, that uh, slaves uh, had uh, very limited freedom, uh, whereas SFs uh, had uh, far more uh, uh, freedom uh, 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 than, 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 than slaves, uh, but um, uh, they, they are all usually branded uh, as uh, slaves. I mean, uh, as, as uh, 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 enslaved, uh, uh, people who are not free, bonded uh, is the right word. Would you say then that serfdom was more analogous to the tenant farming uh, arrangements that were made in the American South after the slave trade than slavery itself? Uh, in some sense. Um, but not quite. <laughs> not quite. Uh, there is really, uh, a serfdom is worse than uh, a, a sharecropping. Okay. Uh, if we are to uh, bring together with several categories of exploited uh, people, uh, uh, slaves will be the worst. Uh, next to them uh, will be serfs, because the serfs we are not really totally free. Uh, but then uh, uh, below where uh, all of that, uh, you could uh, bring in uh, sharecroppers, uh, wage uh, uh, workers, uh, but uh, the main, the main uh, element to use in uh, uh, describing them, uh, differentiating uh, one from the other, uh, is the element of freedom, the amount of freedom uh, uh, that uh, they, they had. Uh, uh, slaves had very little. Uh, SFs had the, a little more. Uh, uh, sharecroppers uh, are basically free, uh, but uh, have uh, uh, difficult uh, economic uh, circumstances uh, that also limited uh, their freedom. Interesting. Uh, well, in addition to the rise of serfdom, um, Europeans also became subject to slave slaves themselves and export of captives. Can you briefly give us a lesson on that history? I mean, who were the principal actors along the day last, and in what ways can we compare that experience with what obtained in Africa? Uh, really, yeah, the whole uh, process. First of all, there has to be a market, a, a market, okay. uh, a market uh, where uh, a, a captives uh, can be sold, uh, and people uh, uh, who were uh, needed uh, that kind of uh, uh, coerced uh, uh, labor uh, willing uh, to buy. Uh, now, that is very important, uh, an element. Uh, the other element uh, is um, uh, there has to be uh, uh, a, a group of people in societies that are fragmented. Uh, you really don't have uh, a powerful uh, a state system that can protect uh, citizens. Now, let me say a little bit about uh, this whole idea of uh, the state uh, protecting uh, citizens. Uh, as the government protecting citizens uh, is not just um, a, a, a something that is done uh, as a favor. Uh, one, one very central element in any organized uh, uh, state uh, system uh, is peace. Uh, the uh, state uh, rulers uh, want to have uh, peace. Without peace, uh, there is no way uh, they can uh, get uh, all of the benefits uh, from uh, running a state. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, governments uh, go to a uh, considerable length uh, to ensure uh, uh, that uh, there is uh, peace and stability. Uh, and one thing uh, that can easily disrupt uh, all of that uh, is when uh, families uh, find uh, uh, that uh, their loved ones are taken and sold. 
Uh, now that can uh, bring about a uh, real crisis. Uh, so where uh, all governments uh, known to historians uh, go to considerable lengths uh, to ensure uh, that the most important service they provide uh, to citizens uh, to ensure the survival of a political system is the security of the individuals. Um, secondly, yeah, the protection of property, yeah, but the security of the individuals uh, is the most important uh, thing. Uh, so that is the major reason why governments that uh, are strong enough uh, uh, do not allow uh, their citizens uh, to be uh, taken as um, uh, uh, captives and sold uh, to distant uh, lands. Uh, and uh, that was true of uh, Europe. Uh, and uh, wherever where you will look at uh, the development, uh, the evolution of state systems, it is always true uh, everywhere. Uh, and uh, I, 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 if you've um, I read uh, some of my work uh, that uh, show where how this happened in Africa, uh, all of the major states of Africa were had the same kind of principles, uh, the, the Ashanti Empire, the Oyo Empire, uh, the Dahomean state. Now, these were people who did everything they could uh, to ensure where the, uh, their own citizens were not uh, uh, captured and sold. Uh, even as we move down south, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the king of Congo uh, uh, did the same. Uh, and the interesting thing is these are people who are willing, given the circumstances, to take people from all the states and sell them, but not their own people. So uh, the, the, the Ashanti uh, rulers uh, would be uh, uh, willing uh, to uh, take uh, captives uh, either by war or any other way and sell them, but they will go to considerable length uh, to ensure that their own people, their own citizens, uh, were not uh, the ones uh, being taken and uh, being uh, exported. So that's a general uh, 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 common pattern uh, in uh, uh, all of uh, the uh, uh, state systems, uh, strong, relatively strong state systems uh, and known to historians. Thank you for that. So you talk about their desire to protect their own people as well as their willingness to sell peoples of other nations. There was much of that going on in Europe as well, maybe not necessarily selling citizens, but they were kingdoms protecting their own citizens, not so much worried about the citizens of other people. Precisely, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, the, the, uh, the problem uh, of uh, the uh, slave trade uh, uh, in Europe, uh, the export uh, of uh, Europeans uh, by other Europeans uh, came up uh, during uh, the, uh, uh, the the Roman uh, the, the, the expansion of the Roman Empire, uh, and this really is a very good example. The Romans, as they uh, expanded uh, the empire, were willing uh, to uh, capture with the people they fought uh, and uh, uh, sell them. But the moment uh, the Romans incorporated the territory uh, into the Roman Empire. Uh, and those people became Roman citizens and they could no longer were be uh, seized uh, and sold. Uh, they were protected. Uh, so not until uh, the collapse of the Roman Empire uh, uh, would uh, a large scale uh, uh, trading uh, in uh, uh, Europeans uh, become uh, a, a major uh, uh, problem. Uh, but let me let me uh, say one thing that uh, can easily uh, be overlooked as we talk about all of this. Uh, we always tend uh, to uh, 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 carry uh, present day uh, conceptions and uh, uh, ideologies uh, to the past uh, when uh, those things didn't really exist uh, as of the 
period, the, the Middle Ages, uh, early uh, modern uh, Europe, the whole idea of a, a European, a common European identity did not exist. Uh, just as uh, when the uh, transatlantic slave trade uh, began uh, in uh, uh, Africa, the whole idea of Africans, uh, seeing uh, everyone in, uh, uh, on the continent as African, oh. that did not exist. Uh, uh, for for the uh, even even among uh, what later will become an ethnic uh, group, uh, the Yoruba ethnic uh, uh, group uh, was not seen as such. Uh, not every uh, uh, person today uh, who will uh, describe uh, himself or herself as Yoruba uh, uh, existed in the uh, 16th, 17th, 18th. Even the 19th century, uh, you had about uh, 12 uh, kingdoms uh, in uh, Yoruba land uh, as of uh, uh, the 18th and 19th century. The most powerful of all of them uh, was the, Oyo, the old Oyo Empire. Uh, so as far as uh, the Oyo person was concerned, uh, anyone who was not Oyo, was uh, an alien. Uh, as far as uh, the Dahomeans were concerned, anyone who was not a Dahomean was an alien. Uh, as far as uh, the, the uh, Ashanti kingdom uh, was concerned, anyone who was not uh, uh, an Ashanti citizen was an alien. So the whole idea of a common African identity is a 20th century phenomenon. Uh, the whole idea of a common European identity, uh, again, was a much later uh, uh, phenomenon. And uh, uh, as we talk about uh, history, uh, we must ensure that uh, we don't carry uh, our current um, ideas, our current ideologies uh, back to a period when they did not exist. Thank you for that. Uh, that's important clarification for all of us. So if we look back to the 15th and the 16th century in Europe, it wasn't necessarily pan-European identity that helped bring about the enslavement of Europeans. So what was it? If they didn't unite as Europeans, how did they disentangle well, themselves from this problem? They, 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 as I said earlier on, uh, maybe yeah, we should have uh, some, uh, some sort of general uh, analytical of, uh, framework. Uh, uh, for the uh, outbreak uh, of enslavement and trade in slaves, uh, two very critical uh, elements uh, will have to come together with to have uh, an active uh, trade in humans. First of all, there has to be a market, uh, something I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, then yes. uh, you, you need to have... Uh, uh, fragmented uh, uh, groups uh, without uh, centralized, uh, 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 strong state systems capable of uh, protecting citizens. Now, those two elements have to come together. Uh, one without the other will not work. Uh, if you if you have uh, fragmented uh, societies. That by itself will not produce uh, a trade in humans. Uh, there has to be uh, a market uh, where such people can be sold uh, before where fragmentation becomes uh, a permissible, a permissible uh, kind of uh, element uh, to bring uh, captives uh, to the market. Now, now, that was the kind of situation we had uh, in Europe uh, uh, after the collapse uh, of the Roman Empire. As I mentioned earlier, the Romans, as they expanded, they did um, uh, sell uh, the prisoners that they uh, took in the wars. But the moment uh, those uh, communities became part of the uh, Roman Empire, uh, the uh, 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 Roman rulers uh, took it as their responsibility uh, to protect every Roman citizen no matter where the Roman citizen was, whether the Roman citizen was in Rome 
or he was in uh, the uh, British Isles, uh, the Roman citizen was a Roman citizen and was protected by the Roman state. Uh, but once the Roman, uh, the centralized uh, Roman Empire collapsed, uh, fragmentation took over. Now, one important element in uh, uh, that long uh, history, the mere fragmentation uh, of uh, the uh, uh, elements in, 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 in the uh, Roman, uh, original Roman Empire by itself did not produce uh, a trade uh, in slaves. In fact, the uh, slaves uh, that uh, had existed uh, in the Roman Empire, uh, as the Roman Empire collapsed, the markets, the markets uh, where captives uh, were sold and people who needed uh, the low, the, the coerced uh, uh, labor of uh, uh, slaves uh, were willing to pay uh, for were slaves. Now, once those markets uh, disappeared because of the collapse of the Roman Empire, uh, it wasn't uh, really profitable for people to continue uh, uh, to uh, hold uh, human beings uh, as uh, chattels. Uh, and therefore, that was where uh, the uh, former slaves uh, gradually became uh, transformed into serfs. Now, what is the economics of this? Now, for you to hold people uh, as chattel, you need considerable um, uh, 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 application of um, uh, supervision. You can't just leave slaves for, for, for them to produce uh, for you. You, sure. need, you, you need uh, a very expensive uh, organization of uh, supervision. Now, uh, it, when you don't really have that kind of expansive market to sell the products of slaves, uh, it wasn't uh, a sensible thing, an economically sensible thing to do, to continue to spend resources, uh, pro uh, uh, try to supervise the worker of uh, uh, slaves, uh, it was a much cheaper way of getting the uh, products from uh, former slaves uh, by leaving them to produce for themselves, provide, oh, okay. uh, provide some land for them uh, to produce for themselves, and then uh, collect uh, tribute. So uh, what uh, yeah, the former uh, slave owners uh, did uh, was the conversion uh, of uh, these uh, former slaves uh, to serfs, uh, who had to produce for themselves. They were given some land, they produced for themselves, uh, but then uh, they paid uh, a tribute, uh, either tribute in kind or tribute in labor uh, uh, to uh, uh, their lords. Uh, and and um, that was the uh, first stage uh, after the uh, Roman Empire collapsed. But subsequently, uh, markets uh, did appear uh, slave markets, uh, markets uh, where people uh, were willing to pay uh, for the coerced uh, labor of uh, uh, captives um, uh, in the Mediterranean and uh, other uh, uh, places. Now, at that point, uh, uh, the issue of fragmentation uh, took on a different uh, turn, uh, and uh, these uh, fragmented uh, societies, including uh, what would later become uh, the United uh, Kingdom, uh, uh, became places uh, where uh, uh, slaves, uh, captives uh, were taken, uh, uh, exported uh, uh, to the Mediterranean, uh, where you had uh, a, a, a market. So now that was the kind of a, a, a development. Uh, and that pattern is easily uh, 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 repeated uh, all over. Uh, and, and it... Um, uh, came up uh, in uh, 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 West Africa uh, as uh, the um, uh, Portuguese and uh, uh, the Spaniards um, uh, engaged in the uh, voyages of exploration and the Americas, uh, 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 Western Africa uh, became uh, uh, brought together in one uh, Atlantic uh, system. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, so, the when you have a strong central government, I mean, that's one strong level of defense against um, slave raids and all that. Um, so I want to understand, in one of your works, um, you wrote about the collapse of the 
Songa Empire in 1591, following the invasion by uh, of Morocco. Morocco yeah. Maybe you could just explain. I mean, for our viewers to to understand. I mean, how did that happen, and how did that um, contribute to the proliferation of slave trade in Africa? Uh, again, if we go back to the point that I was making earlier, uh, the Soga Empire where was a strong state. Uh, you, 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 you had uh, some of these uh, fairly strong uh, states. Uh, the Soga Empire, were the Mali Empire, uh, and a number of, <clears throat> a number of um, uh, other were West African states. Uh, uh, strong enough uh, to be able uh, to protect uh, their citizens. Uh, and uh, the, the, the point that I was uh, trying to make uh, in that uh, historical um, uh, analysis uh, uh, is to say uh, uh, that uh, not all of Africa were, was uh, made up uh, of fragmented uh, societies. A lot of the fragmented uh, societies as of uh, the 16th century were to the coast, uh, but uh, as you move uh, further uh, inland into the savannah, you did come across uh, uh, some uh, well-organized, uh, centralized uh, states. Uh, but the problem is that uh, some of these uh, centralized uh, states themselves uh, collapsed uh, subsequently. Uh, and uh, the uh, Moroccan invasion uh, of uh, uh, 1591, very much associated uh, with the uh, Trans-Saharan uh, trade in gold, uh, the, the, the Moroccans uh, believing uh, uh, that uh, they invaded uh, and uh, conquered um, uh, uh, the Songhai uh, uh, Empire, where they will be able to uh, uh, take charge uh, of the gold uh, production and trade. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the, the exercise uh, did not uh, yield uh, the expected uh, outcome, uh, political crisis following the invasion uh, and the defeat uh, of uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Songa uh, 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 system, uh, weakened uh, uh, economy and society uh, to a point uh, where uh, much of the gold uh, that um, uh, the, the, the Moroccans uh, had thought that they were going to get uh, could not be produced. Uh, and so it was a futile effort, but all the same, uh, it created uh, the, the kind uh, of uh, fragmentation uh, that uh, uh, was so central uh, to uh, uh, the, the, the progress of uh, taking captives and selling uh, captives. So one centralized state that uh, could have uh, operated to at least protect uh, some of the people that subsequently became involved uh, in the kind of crisis uh, that generated the uh, uh, captives, uh, the, the, the Songa Empire uh, simply disintegrated uh, following uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Moroccan invasion uh, of uh, uh, 1591 uh, and so uh, contributed uh, to uh, the, the uh, expanded uh, uh, number of communities that uh, could be described uh, uh, as uh, fra fragmented uh, communities. Uh, unable to provide the effective uh, protection for citizens. Thank you. There's actually a really great documentary on the Shanghai Empire and its eventual collapse, and we're going to put it for you in the description top of YouTube. But I think you, will, um, our viewers, find it very uh, educational as well. Uh, but let's move on to the next uh, question. So I remember growing up, um, we always talked about slavery in terms of raids and kidnapping by Europeans. But recently, I've noticed a shift in the way we talk about this. So the idea now that has become popular is that there was a pre-existing slave market in Africa. Africans were just trading themselves anyway. So when the Europeans showed up, they were like, here, you want to buy these people? We were planning to sell them. Where does the truth lie? What advantages did uh, Europeans have at the dawn of the 16th century in terms of their ability to um, push their own demand, both in terms of material resources and human resources, and how did that affect supply? Um, that's a very, very good uh, uh, question. Uh, the the, the um, uh, issue really uh, uh, was, uh, first of all, brought up uh, by the late uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, 
John uh, Fage, uh, who, who, who developed uh, that argument uh, that uh, uh, slave trade already existed, the slavery already existed uh, in uh, 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 Africa well before the uh, uh, coming of the Europeans. Uh, now, that argument uh, was countered uh, uh, by uh, uh, the, the, the late uh, Walter Rodney. Uh, Walter Rodney uh, uh, studied um, uh, the Upper Guinea coast, uh, where uh, the slave trade uh, also became uh, a very important uh, problem uh, uh, in the 18th century. Uh, and uh, his question uh, uh, was, uh, were these uh, people uh, in the Upper Guinea coast uh, involved them uh, uh, in uh, taking and selling uh, uh, captives uh, before the uh, uh, the Europeans uh, came, uh, and uh, he documented uh, the whole process and uh, came up uh, with this uh, conclusion uh, uh, that uh, uh, slavery uh, in this area, the uh, trade in uh, humans in this area. Uh, only developed uh, a response uh, to the activities uh, of the Europeans. Uh, and uh, uh, subsequently, uh, a number of us uh, have expanded uh, uh, that uh, uh, research uh, from uh, the Upper Guinea coast uh, uh, to the rest uh, of uh, 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 Western uh, Africa. Uh, and and the, the, the facts uh, are fairly easy uh, to uh, 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 present. Uh, the, 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 as I said earlier on, uh, what we refer to as Atlantic Africa, uh, that is the coastal societies of uh, Western Africa, these were very, very small communities. Uh, these were fragmented, the small communities uh, had no real large markets uh, for the uh, products of enslaved uh, people. Uh, and, and, and therefore, there is no uh, reason whatsoever to expect uh, uh, that uh, there were already in existence uh, a, a, a large scale uh, a taking of captives and selling of uh, uh, captives. It was not on until the Europeans, the Portuguese arrived uh, in what today is Ghana uh, and the uh, gold trade uh, in Ghana really began to flourish. The Ghanaians uh, had uh, been uh, exporting gold um, uh, uh, through the Trans-Saharan trade, uh, but the coming of the Portuguese uh, expanded uh, the gold trade, the gold production and the trade in gold uh, considerably to a point uh, uh, where uh, the, the uh, uh, Akan uh, traders and gold producers uh, that accumulated a lot of uh, wealth uh, uh, began to uh, invest uh, that uh, wealth uh, in uh, forest clearing uh, to develop uh, farmlands uh, as population uh, grew and markets uh, for uh, foodstuffs uh, expanded. Uh, at that point uh, in uh, uh, the late uh, 16th century, uh, the, the uh, uh, Akan uh, uh, gold uh, traders and producers uh, uh, needed uh, additional labor for this uh, uh, forest clearing uh, and uh, the development of farmlands. And they began to import uh, labor from other parts uh, of Africa rather than um, sell uh, 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 captives themselves. They were actually importing uh, 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 labor from uh, other parts uh, of uh, Western uh, Africa. And, and uh, as historians uh, developed uh, this, this um, uh, line of uh, research, the uh, outcome uh, was um, uh, these uh, imported uh, people uh, were very quickly uh, transformed uh, into uh, uh, independent uh, uh, workers rather than slaves. Uh, so that even uh, the fact uh, of um, uh, 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 human uh, uh, import uh, for labor purposes 
uh, it did not lead to where the uh, full development of a slave uh, a society uh, in uh, uh, what later where will become uh, a, a, a Ghana. Uh, uh, but uh, that is something that one can say, yeah, that's uh, where the truth is. But it was not something that was already in progress uh, before the uh, Portuguese arrived. This was uh, part and parcel of the impact uh, of the activities of the Europeans now here, I, I, I can distinguish between this development and uh, what uh, would uh, develop uh, uh, later. Now this was something, this is the period when the, uh, the Europeans were buying, not humans, but products. Products uh, coming from uh, the natural uh, resources of West Africa, the um, uh, human labor of uh, uh, West Africans, uh, gold, uh, uh, wood, uh, real product. That was the main trade uh, that uh, the Portuguese uh, developed. And it continued for a while, for almost 200 years, uh, from about uh, 1450 uh, to uh, 1650. Uh, uh, this was the main activity, uh, not trade the humans. Uh, sometimes uh, because of the uh, importance uh, of the slave trade uh, later on, we often uh, tend to make the mistake uh, that the Europeans came to uh, uh, West Africa just for the purpose uh, of um, uh, 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 trading in humans. That was not the real original motivation. The real original motivation that brought the Portuguese uh, to uh, West Africa was the gold. Mansa Musa of Mali had gone to a pilgrimage in the 14th century and carried a lot of gold with him. And actually, maybe with some element of exaggeration, because of the huge amount of gold that Mansa Musa carried there with him, uh, the, the story goes uh, that it brought uh, uh, the, the price of gold uh, down uh, for the period uh, uh, he was uh, uh, in Mecca uh, for the pilgrimage. Uh, it was that knowledge, the knowledge uh, uh, that um, uh, much of the gold on, on which uh, the European economies and the Middle Eastern economies uh, depended uh, for, for, for decades, centuries, that that gold actually was coming from West Africa. It is that gold uh, uh, that um, uh, uh, motivated the, the uh, uh, Portuguese to want to go to uh, uh, West Africa and uh, be able to get the gold uh, directly uh, from uh, the source, uh, rather than depending uh, on uh, uh, Middle Eastern traders and uh, North African traders, uh, areas uh, that uh, were uh, uh, Islam uh, Islamized. In other words, the whole crisis between Christianity and Islam uh, became part of the problem. How do you depend on your enemy here for such an important uh, product uh, as gold? And um, a, a lot of uh, people in Europe uh, didn't think it was uh, good politics uh, to depend uh, on uh, uh, the uh, North African uh, traders, uh, the, the uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, Middle East uh, uh, traders who have access uh, to gold coming from West Africa. So it was that really that motivated uh, the uh, Portuguese in the first place. Uh, and uh, as soon as they arrived, uh, even though, as I said earlier on, they did take some uh, uh, captives uh, directly themselves, that wasn't really an important element in what uh, they did as they arrived. When they arrived, Many of uh, what uh, you have uh, in uh, Ghana today that uh, we describe uh, uh, as the forts, uh, we, we, we often uh, make the mistake of believing that these uh, big forts that, that um, are still in existence in uh, 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 Ghana today uh, were built uh, for the uh, slave trade. They were not. Uh, these were forts that were uh, uh, built uh, originally by the Portuguese uh, during uh, the gold trade. Uh, they were places where gold was uh, uh, bought and sold. 
and, 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 then, and later on, of course, they will become uh, important in the slave trade, but originally they were not built for the slave trade. And so, as I said earlier, for 200 years, much of what the Europeans did uh, in West Africa was trading in African products. The same thing happened uh, when uh, the Portuguese uh, got to West Central Africa, the Kingdom of Congo. Much of uh, what they traded uh, was copper, uh, not humans. Uh, it was uh, later on uh, that uh, they tried that they were changed uh, from uh, uh, trading uh, uh, copper uh, uh, for, for trading uh, uh, humans. Uh, so that's something that uh, must be put uh, into the uh, analysis, into the story, uh, so that uh, we, um, uh, 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 we, we do justice uh, to historical uh, uh, reality. Um, you talked about uh, the, the, the coming of African Americans to Ghana. Uh, that's an aspect. Uh, I mean, it's something that uh, you, one would expect uh, only in Nigeria, where that uh, nobody uh, is trying to exploit uh, uh, the, 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 the slave trade for a, a modern economic uh, again. So, the, the, the commercialization of uh, history uh, does it appeal to me very much? Uh, the, the, the tourist uh, industry that seems to be built uh, on the slave trade, uh, that is something to be expected, uh, but it does a considerable amount of uh, uh, harm to um, uh, historical accuracy. Yeah, uh, I was um, I, in uh, uh, Senegal uh, some years back, uh, and we were taken uh, to the uh, island uh, of uh, Gore, uh, and uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the narrator, uh, the, the official narrator, was um, uh, telling historians uh, stories uh, that uh, almost everyone in the group uh, could see uh, was not accurate. Uh, the, uh, a uh, so-called um, uh, door of no return. Uh, how many people passed uh, through that door? Uh, Senegal was important in the slave trade, uh, but uh, was, was, it wasn't as important uh, as uh, the uh, tourist industry uh, would want to uh, 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 present it. Uh, and uh, Ghana, again, uh, was uh, important in the slave trade, uh, but not um, uh, half as important as Nigeria. Uh, what uh, today uh, was at some point, the, the, the uh, secessionists uh, had wanted to create a Biafra uh, estate. Uh, the term Biafra uh, was really uh, a name given to the coastal area where much of uh, the slave trading uh, was done. Uh, old Calabar, New Calabar, where Boni, uh, and all of those places. Uh, the, the evidence is very clear uh, that Ghana was not uh, half as important, uh, quantitatively speaking, uh, as uh, Nigeria when uh, it comes uh, to uh, the uh, slave trade. But um, uh, Nigerians have other opportunities, and no effort has been made there to commercialize. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You know, it's interesting that um, I was in Ghana last year. I went to one of the year of returns and um, mm. all 200 plus of us who were there were offered an opportunity to take uh, an ancestry test through um, African ancestry. Uh, you were talking about uh, the experience in Ghana, the slave fish. I happened to be with the delegation uh, last year or during the year of return of 200 plus Americans mm. um, who went to Ghana. And uh, we had an opportunity to take a DNA test uh, with African ancestry, which I highly recommend everybody uh, who is a descendant of slave do. Uh, but what was interesting is that almost no one came from Ghana uh, to the point where the Ministry of Tourism was uh, made a joke about it. He said, I'm revoking all of your visa. I said, I mean, was, he was really joking. But... It was interesting. No, I think either nobody or maybe one person, but out of like, you know, about 200 people, and I think almost all of them got a DNA test. And there weren't a lot of Ghanaians 
um, in the bunch. So uh, when you said that, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's something that, um, you know, it's call it exploit, but I, I do think Nigeria should look at how to reconnect their diaspora of um, enslaved Africans to uh, the country where a lot of us came from. Yes, yes. They, 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 just as I said earlier, well, many of these things uh, are things that depend on uh, what alternatives, uh, what economic alternatives uh, you have. Uh, as since uh, the, the uh, oil boom, uh, very little else uh, seems uh, to matter very much. And uh, it is not to do uh, with the people, it's just uh, the way uh, uh, humans uh, respond uh, to economic activities. Uh, uh, if if uh, you, 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 you have the opportunity uh, to do something that gives you more money, uh, why spend your time uh, to do something else? Um, uh, if if uh, the Ghanaians uh, expand the oil production uh, to the level of the Nigerian one, uh, the likelihood uh, is that uh, much of the effort uh, put into tourism uh, may also uh, uh, decline. So that's... Um, uh, the way uh, uh, everything develops. I did see uh, in one of your emails that uh, the uh, talk about uh, the Yoruba, uh, that a lot of uh, Yoruba were in the US. Um, that surprised me uh, a little bit because uh, by the time uh, the Yoruba wars uh, broke out, uh, from uh, the very late uh, 18th century uh, uh, through the whole of uh, the 19th century uh, uh, before the intervention uh, of the British. Uh, by then, uh, the Americans uh, had uh, already abolished the slave trade, uh, 1808. Uh, so most of the uh, people uh, who were the captives uh, that uh, came out of the Yoruba wars of the 19th century actually ended up in Brazil. So if you, so if you were to go to Brazil, uh, you will be surprised that the amount of Yoruba culture uh, uh, that uh, till today uh, still exists uh, uh, in Brazil. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, because uh, these uh, we are largely uh, war captives of uh, major wars. Uh, they included uh, high-ranking uh, Yoruba people, priests, uh, leaders, uh, and, 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 and these uh, were the ones uh, who carried uh, much of the Yoruba culture where that uh, you will find uh, uh, in uh, uh, Brazil today. The, the other part of the Americas uh, where Yoruba culture where is still very much visible uh, is Cuba. Yes. Uh, because again, uh, the, the uh, Cuban uh, slave trade uh, continued uh, uh, very much uh, into the time uh, of the Yoruba Wars. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the, 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 the main reason. So uh, the U.S., in my opinion, or at least my expectation, uh, wouldn't be uh, a place uh, where you will find, uh, relatively speaking, a lot of Yoruba, where, uh, uh, people of Yoruba origin, uh, uh, but uh, really, yeah, Brazil and uh, uh, Cuba. Yeah, so if I may clarify the, the email, the study had found that a number of African Americans had Nigerian origin, not necessarily Yoruba per se. Uh, okay. uh, so it could be other parts of yeah. Nigeria, yeah. not Yoruba per se, because as you rightly mentioned, uh, this would have been not only prior to, like the time when the oil empire really crumbled would have been after that. Uh, so I think that was a segue into a, a slightly different um, question that I was asked going to, we're going to touch upon later. 
Okay. I okay. did want to ask, though, you mentioned an author that I thought, you know, we should all know about. You said Walter Rodney had challenged. Was it Walter Rodney who had challenged yeah. the idea of a free yeah. Yeah. What the work that we should be looking at? Uh, he, he, he has a book, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, Guinea, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Guinea thing, but uh, the one that would be more easily accessible and the uh, argument uh, well developed there uh, is uh, his uh, article in the Journal of African, uh, I think it's the Journal of African History, um, 1966, I think. Uh, that's where he challenged, actually, yeah, his uh, PhD thesis. Uh, his PhD dissertation uh, that uh, was produced uh, for uh, SOAS, uh, University of London, uh, was uh, on uh, the, the uh, uh, issue where he took up uh, with J.D. Fage. Uh, he was the first uh, to challenge uh, J.D. Fage, and the challenge continued for quite a while uh, he uh, used that as a kind of a springboard there for his um, uh, other work. Uh, so uh, Walter Rodney is uh, a very well-known uh, uh, historian uh, uh, of the debate uh, on uh, whether, whether there was already uh, a large uh, domestic uh, market uh, for slaves uh, in West Africa where before the Europeans uh, came. Uh, that was uh, a debate uh, that uh, started uh, between uh, Walter Rodney and J.D. Fage. Uh, you, you, know, you know about uh, Walter Rodney? Uh, no, I, so I was hoping that it was, you've actually introduced it to me, so um, oh, I will check it out. Uh, he, 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 he is. He, he was very, very well known uh, before he was assassinated. Uh, he, he, he came from Guyana uh, and uh, he was a very radical uh, historian. Uh, he took his uh, history seriously, yeah, but um, he drew a line uh, between uh, his academic uh, work uh, as an historian uh, and uh, his... Uh, uh, radical uh, work uh, as a political activist uh, and uh, the uh, rulers uh, in Guyana uh, were not comfortable uh, with him. Uh, I, I, I met him only once physically. Yeah, we were together in the conference uh, in Haiti uh, in, uh, uh, in 1978. Uh, uh, when you see him uh, in person, um, uh, he doesn't show that element of uh, radicalism uh, that uh, you see uh, in uh, his uh, uh, publications. A very calm gentleman, uh, uh, but uh, he was assassinated uh, uh, by uh, the rulers of um, uh, Guyana. Uh, he was uh, sent a bomb in the radio uh, he was in uh, a vehicle with his uh, uh, brother, uh, and they didn't realize uh, that uh, there was a bomb in the radio, and as uh, it turned on uh, the uh, radio, it exploded uh, and uh, killed him uh, instantly, uh, while uh, uh, luckily uh, his uh, uh, brother survived, and that's how we got to know the full details. Wow. Uh, the government probably had the thought uh, that um, uh, just killing him uh, together with his uh, brother will end uh, the, the whole thing, but he didn't. Wow, In interesting. Okay, sir, so, um, I will take uh, two questions uh, that I think they are related. So first, I would like you to speak to the issue of the Portuguese, I mean, when they came, I mean, what we know as Ghana today, um, you talked about, I mean, generally in Africa, that the original intention wasn't to come and take slaves, they were after good or whatever resource they could find. But so I'd like to you to explain, like show us what what were the things they saw that they felt old. Oh, there's an opportunity here to take stage one. And I also relate that to the issue of the Kingdom of Congo in one of your work. I talked about um, the political game. Now Congo was 
like a relatively strong kingdom, a strong central government. And so they, they, could, they couldn't come frontally. They, they came and they were like trading with them, living together, exchanging religious beliefs and philosophy. And, but later down the line, King Antonio re realized uh, that these people are actually after something else. So maybe you could also shed more light on that, that uh, part of history, sir. Uh, let's, let's, let's take uh, the kingdom uh, of uh, uh, Congo and the Portuguese. Uh, the problem uh, developed in stages. First of all, uh, let's uh, make this point uh, as clear as we can. Uh, the, the, the transition, the transition from uh, the trade in, uh, in products, uh, which was the main thing, uh, uh, that uh, the Europeans uh, were engaged in doing uh, for about uh, 200 years. Uh, now that trade uh, began to change. Uh, the transition began uh, after uh, the discovery of the Americas uh, and uh, uh, Brazil had become uh, a Portuguese uh, colony. Uh, we need not go into all of the details about uh, how uh, 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 Portugal gained um, uh, uh, Brazil as a colony, yeah, but once uh, Brazil became uh, a colony, uh, as well as um, uh, the other Europeans, uh, the British, the French, uh, the uh, uh, Spaniards, uh, uh, having uh, 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 colonies in the Americas, uh, a place uh, with a lot of uh, uh, natural resources, uh, but very limited uh, uh, human labor. Now that really uh, uh, created uh, the, the, the uh, uh, opportunity uh, that expanded uh, uh, the, the uh, export of uh, people uh, to be uh, enslaved in the Americas. And that changed everything. Uh, from about uh, the uh, middle of the 17th century on, uh, increasingly uh, the Europeans became uh, more interested uh, in the American markets uh, uh, where much labor was uh, needed uh, and uh, uh, you couldn't really develop uh, uh, free wage labor, the opportunity to do that uh, didn't quite exist, and much of the labor uh, that you could uh, get uh, had to be coerced uh, in labor. And um, uh, for the kind of uh, story we've already told, um, uh, there is always this uh, 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 issue that comes up uh, when it is discussed. Why, uh, if uh, coerced labor was needed in the Americas, uh, why uh, uh, was um, uh, Western Africa were uh, uh, taken as the uh, appropriate uh, place uh, where uh, uh, to get uh, 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 that kind uh, of uh, labor. Uh, if we are to go into that, uh, we will probably uh, spend another hour when discussing that. Uh, so uh, let me just mention it uh, and, and, and leave it. So that's the thing. Uh, the the uh, 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 Portuguese, uh, just as they started uh, trading in gold uh, uh, in uh, uh, what uh, later would become uh, uh, Ghana, so did they also start uh, trading in copper uh, as a, a god uh, uh, toward the kingdom uh, of uh, uh, Congo. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the emperor uh, of uh, the, the kingdom uh, was uh, uh, glad uh, to uh, have uh, the Portuguese. Uh, if I may just uh, give an aside, uh, one very interesting thing about the Kingdom of Congo, uh, what the Portuguese wanted to do uh, in the Kingdom of Benin, the Benin Empire, they had thought uh, that uh, they were going to be able to establish uh, Catholicism uh, in the uh, uh, Benin uh, Kingdom in the 16th century. Uh, they tried, uh, but the uh, Oba uh, of Benin uh, wouldn't budge. So all the efforts uh, uh, that uh, the Portuguese made uh, to try uh, uh, and uh, 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 plant uh, Catholicism uh, in the kingdom of uh, Benin uh, uh, didn't succeed. But somehow, uh, the same effort uh, succeeded considerably in the kingdom of Congo, uh, so much so that at some point, uh, 
uh, a prince uh, in uh, the kingdom uh, was sent uh, uh, to uh, uh, Portugal and uh, became uh, uh, the, the first uh, uh, African bishop uh, in the Catholic um, uh, church. Uh, so that's how they started. It was uh, something very peaceful, uh, very um, uh, mutually beneficial, but then as uh, the, the, uh, the demand uh, uh, for uh, 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 captives uh, to be employed as uh, coerced uh, uh, workers, uh, as that developed, uh, first of all, it developed um, uh, in the islands uh, off uh, the coast uh, of West uh, uh, Central Africa, uh, uh, where uh, uh, sugar plantations uh, started. Uh, but the moment uh, the effort to colonize and uh, benefit uh, from the resources of Ghana uh, developed, uh, the, the, the Portuguese uh, more or less uh, abandoned uh, Sao Tome, uh, which uh, had been their major uh, sugar plantation uh, uh, colony uh, to um, uh, move uh, uh, captives um, uh, to uh, uh, Brazil. Uh, and uh, as that happened, uh, the ability uh, of um, uh, the Kingdom of uh, Congo uh, to uh, restrain uh, the Portuguese uh, uh, from uh, getting uh, captives uh, taken from within the Congo Kingdom, uh, he wasn't uh, able to do it. Uh, the Kingdom was not strong enough to confront uh, the Portuguese traders and be able to tell them uh, what to do and what not to do. Uh, and so much so where the, the, king, the, the, the um, uh, emperor were wrote to the king uh, of uh, Portugal uh, that uh, he should uh, please uh, take uh, his uh, traders uh, uh, from uh, his uh, kingdom, uh, that they were creating trouble for him, uh, that they were buying uh, captives uh, taken from within uh, the kingdom, uh, and he didn't want them uh, to be there anymore. Uh, if the king uh, wanted to send their uh, people, he should send their uh, priests, uh, he should send their uh, teachers. Uh, those are the people he wanted. Uh, but again, uh, he didn't really have uh, the uh, uh, capacity uh, to uh, enforce uh, uh, that. And uh, very quickly, the source, the main source of the captives uh, purchased by the Portuguese moved outside the, the Congo Kingdom. Uh, they seized uh, taking captives uh, within the Congo Kingdom, and the people that were being sold uh, were being uh, taken from uh, the hinterland, uh, in the interior. And at that point, uh, just as I made the point earlier on, uh, the, king, the, the, the king of uh, uh, Congo uh, thought uh, there was um, uh, no reason uh, to um, uh, continue with the battle any, any further. Uh, now, where uh, people are coming uh, from outside uh, uh, the kingdom uh, and uh, not uh, his uh, citizens that are being sold, not until later on uh, when uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, new colony uh, of, of um, uh, the, 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 the new, the new, 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 new Congo, the, the new uh, uh, Portuguese. Um, a, a, a colony uh, a, a developed um, uh, outside uh, the Congo Kingdom, and uh, the Portuguese were now able to use Angola as uh, a springboard uh, to go into the interior and take captives themselves. So, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, uh, a while in, in, in 1441, uh, the uh, Portuguese uh, raided um, uh, small villages on the uh, Senegambia coast. Uh, by the time uh, the, the uh, Angola uh, 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 colony uh, was planted, uh, uh, that became a major uh, source of uh, uh, captives, and the Portuguese became uh, directly involved uh, in the taking of uh, captives, not just buying. Uh, but actually yeah, participating uh, in capturing. Uh, and that uh, led uh, eventually yeah, to uh, the uh, collapse uh, of uh, the Congo uh, 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 Kingdom. So uh, it's a fairly complicated uh, uh, story, uh, uh, but uh, the, the pattern is just similar to uh, what uh, we talked about uh, in the case of Europe, in the case of um, 
uh, Dahomey, in the case of um, uh, uh, Ashanti, uh, these uh, states uh, did everything they could uh, uh, to prevent uh, their own citizens uh, uh, being captured and sold, uh, sometimes successfully, but uh, not always. Thank you for that. Uh, so you described the situation in your, your chapter uh, in um, African resistance. Uh, you describe that the many African kingdoms face something akin to prisoner's dilemma. In particular, you explain how relatively strong nations like Oyo, Dayome, Asante, as you've been talking about, um, sought to protect their own people. Can you explain to our audience, first of all, I don't think everybody will know, what is prisoner's dilemma and how does it apply particularly? And I want to specifically focus on this one on the kingdom of Iome because um, recently I have noticed it's become sort of synonymous with the most despicable aspect of West African slave trade. What should we understand about these kingdoms, especially Diome? So two-part question, a prisoner's dilemma and then focusing on Diome in particular. Uh, the, 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 the concept of the prisoner's dilemma is a common sense uh, concept. Uh, uh, when uh, when when the police uh, take uh, two three people or more involved in some criminal uh, activity, uh, they are separated. Uh, they are separated and they are interrogated separately, uh, trying to extract information from them. Uh, and one way uh, it is done, uh, you, you tell uh, uh, one that, uh, you see, uh, if you cooperate uh, with us, uh, you will become uh, a witness uh, uh, rather than being somebody uh, to be prosecuted. Uh, we have been uh, talking uh, with the other person. He has been giving us a lot of information. Uh, so if you don't uh, uh, do the same thing, uh, you are likely to be the one uh, uh, who will, uh, in the end, uh, be prosecuted uh, and the other person will become the witness. So uh, it is in your own interest that uh, will give to us uh, all the information you have uh, and you may uh, very well become uh, a witness uh, uh, rather than uh, somebody uh, being uh, prosecuted. So this is the, uh, the dilemma uh, of uh, the prisoner. Yeah? He, 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 he doesn't know where what the other person is telling uh, the, the police, uh, and uh, he doesn't want to become uh, the one uh, uh, that uh, will be prosecuted and the other one uh, free. Uh, and so uh, how do you uh, decide um, uh, what your own self-interest is? Now, that is what uh, uh, the kind of concept uh, political scientists uh, apply uh, uh, to uh, uh, political analysis, uh, the problem uh, of uh, uh, trying uh, uh, to save yourself uh, in a situation in which you don't know uh, what the others are going to do. Uh, now, if you apply that concept uh, to uh, the Atlantic uh, slave trade, uh, what it enables you uh, to focus on in terms of analysis uh, is that uh, you have uh, so many uh, political, uh, autonomous political uh, uh, systems. Uh, if you say uh, you don't want to participate uh, in the slave trade, uh, for instance, uh, if uh, Dahomey uh, said, uh, I'm not going to participate uh, in the slave trade, uh, and uh, other nearby uh, uh, communities or uh, state systems uh, decide to do so, uh, they will get the resources uh, that they need uh, to be able to protect themselves and at the same time uh, be able to take captives uh, from Dahomey. Or put differently, uh, if uh, Ashanti uh, were to say, uh, we are not going to participate, uh, we won't sell captives, we won't take captives, we are going to protect our people and uh, we don't want to take uh, people from uh, uh, other places. Now, that will be a fine thing to say, uh, but then uh, you won't have uh, the resources you need. Uh, in these uh, uh, years, uh, one of the most important uh, resources uh, was firearms. 
and uh, the firearms, uh, you are able to accumulate them uh, by what uh, you are able to sell uh, to the Europeans and you get them in exchange. Uh, and much of uh, what uh, the Europeans wanted to buy at this point uh, with the expansion uh, of uh, uh, demand in the Americas uh, was captives. So if you are not selling captives, uh, you are unlikely to be able to get uh, the wherewithal uh, to have uh, all of the firearms uh, that uh, you need uh, to be able to uh, defend yourself against uh, those uh, who are likely to come and uh, take uh, uh, your West citizens uh, 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 as captives uh, to be exported. So that's the prisoner's uh, dilemma where kind of analysis uh, that is applied uh, to the slave trade. Uh, and that uh, if you decide not to participate, then you expose yourself uh, to the weaknesses uh, of uh, 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 a poorly defended uh, state. Uh, 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 and, and then the people will come into the state, uh, take your subjects, uh, captives, and uh, uh, export them. So that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, a, a number of these um, uh, 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 state systems uh, that emerged during the period uh, of old. So where did uh, a, a lot of these others, uh, the, the Ashanti uh, estate, uh, the uh, estate say in uh, uh, the um, uh, 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 western part uh, of, uh, uh, the, the, the western part of uh, what later became a, a Ghana, uh, the Futajalon estate uh, uh, systems, uh, but none, none succeeded in uh, staying away from the slave trade, uh, simply because you needed the, the, the resources uh, with which to run your state system, to defend your state system, uh, and you needed the firearms, and uh, the only way uh, uh, you, you got those uh, resources uh, was by uh, selling captives. And this is the prisoner's dilemma. Wow. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, so, I mean, if we compare the settings in the, in the 16th century and what we have in Africa generally today in all the countries, I would, I would like you to help us draw parallel for our viewers. To, I mean, how can we relate the two settings together? And uh, so if you have to advise the African leaders in the, maybe in an AU forum, I want to know what you'll be telling them right now, sir. Uh, Somehow, uh, I have been uh, involved uh, in uh, uh, that kind uh, of a situation. Uh, in, uh, uh, in 1986, uh, I organized a major international conference uh, uh, dealing uh, with uh, uh, what uh, we described uh, as the national question. Uh, the, 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 the national question uh, was uh, uh, an idea that I borrowed uh, uh, from the, uh, the, the history of the Soviet uh, Union. Uh, the Soviet Union uh, at the point was made up uh, of uh, a, a multiple uh, uh, ethnicities, uh, nationalities, uh, and the problem uh, of uh, keeping everyone together to um, uh, have peace uh, and uh, develop was very difficult. Uh, and they called it uh, the problem of the national question. Uh, so I applied it uh, to uh, Nigeria, where the, 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 the conference uh, that uh, was uh, so titled, I applied it uh, to uh, Nigeria because we have uh, a, a multiplicity uh, of um, uh, ethnic groups. Uh, and of course, there is a connection with that uh, between that uh, and the slave trade itself. Uh, why is it uh, uh, that uh, uh, African uh, 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 systems uh, are, are bedeviled uh, uh, by uh, uh, political fragmentation? Uh, historians, economic historians, political historians, uh, making comparative analysis uh, of uh, 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 continents I have come up uh, with the uh, 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 a fact uh, uh, that um, uh, Africa is the most fra politically fragmented uh, 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 continent um, uh, in the world. 
Uh, and that creates a problem. That pro fragmentation creates a problem. So if you look at the uh, uh, Nigerian uh, situation, what, which was uh, 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 the main uh, focus of my uh, 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 conference, uh, you, you have this multiplicity uh, of um, uh, 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 ethnic uh, 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 groups. Uh, and my own historical analysis, uh, which uh, was in part of uh, this exercise, uh, is that uh, this multiplicity of ethnic uh, groups uh, arose uh, out of uh, the conflicts associated uh, with the slave trade. Uh, the slave trade uh, did not pitch uh, one ethnic group against another. Uh, you recall uh, what I said about the Yoruba wars. Uh, today we talk about um, uh, uh, the Yoruba as a nation, uh, uh, but uh, originally uh, uh, Yoruba land uh, was uh, made up uh, of several uh, independent uh, uh, autonomous uh, kingdoms. So it, the slave trade uh, did not develop uh, in a way uh, that confronted um, one ethnic group against another. It was some, just something uh, that randomly uh, spread uh, and uh, individuals uh, uh, taking advantage um, uh, of uh, 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 fragmentation. But my argument is that uh, uh, if you had the peaceful trade, uh, you had the peaceful uh, socio-political interaction. Uh, over time, uh, a lot of uh, these uh, ethnicities merge into bigger uh, ethnic uh, 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 communities. Uh, if you look at the history of, uh, uh, of uh, Yoruba land, uh, some politicians uh, would uh, want to tell us uh, that um, uh, the Yoruba people came uh, from uh, one uh, uh, parent, uh, a father and a woman, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, life, uh, being uh, where every uh, Yoruba person uh, came uh, from. But that is simply not true. Uh, no serious uh, Yoruba historian uh, will tell you that. Uh, Professor Ade Ajayi, uh, one of the best uh, known uh, uh, historians uh, of uh, Nigeria, uh, will never well argue uh, that the Yoruba people all came uh, from uh, uh, one uh, 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 parentage. Uh, so th yeah, there was interaction uh, through trade, uh, uh, through uh, uh, socio-political um, uh, uh, meetings. Uh, and as that continued, uh, you find um, a common language emerging and the common culture emerging and people beginning uh, to uh, see themselves as belonging uh, uh, to one uh, uh, a community. Uh, so if you look at the uh, history of the Igbo people, you will find the same thing. Uh, it's a certain areas of Igbo land uh, were actually uh, uh, founded uh, uh, by uh, people uh, coming uh, uh, from uh, uh, south of uh, the Benway. Uh, and that interaction, uh, had it continued uh, peacefully, uh, much of uh, what uh, we uh, see today uh, as uh, uh, the uh, uh, southern uh, part of uh, the uh, uh, middle belt uh, could easily have become uh, uh, the same thing, uh, uh, an enlarged uh, 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 ethnic uh, category, uh, which would have uh, included the Igbo as well. So you, th th that kind of interaction, peaceful interaction that would have enlarged the ethnic uh, groups, uh, minimized the numbers, uh, that peaceful interaction that was on uh, before the coming uh, of uh, the uh, slave trade uh, was cut short. That process was cut short uh, because of the crisis generated uh, by the taking of captives. Uh, one particular example is um, uh, the Middle Belt. Uh, if uh, you look at um, uh, the, the, the uh, area of uh, the, the Middle Belt, uh, the, the, uh, the Joss uh, Plateau area, uh, you find uh, that a uh, lot of uh, uh, the area is made up of a small ethnic group, very small ethnic groups. 
And during the slave trade period, the most of these ethnic groups ran away from the plains uh, where you had the more productive land. And they went uh, to where the hilltops as a way of protecting themselves uh, from um, uh, the slave uh, 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 raiders. Now they were able to protect themselves against the slave raiders. And by so doing, they also protected themselves uh, from integration over mm -hmm. time uh, into uh, larger communities uh, and having a smaller number of um, uh, 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 ethnic groups. So the ethnic uh, fragmentation itself uh, is a product of uh, history, uh, which became uh, uh, actually uh, exploited uh, by the British. Uh, the, the, the whole idea of um, uh, divide and rule, uh, Nigerians were never seen as uh, uh, Nigerians. Uh, for, for the uh, British, uh, these were ethnic uh, people. Uh, they were Yoruba, they were Igbo, they were, they were uh, Beninese. Uh, rather than seeing them uh, as um, uh, citizens of a single country, uh, that was encouraged. So by the time we had uh, our independence, uh, you had uh, this uh, multiplicity of um, uh, ethnic uh, groups, uh, which uh, has uh, created uh, the, the, the kind of uh, crisis that we have. So what I did uh, in um, at, at this uh, uh, conference was to examine uh, the, 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 uh, the magnitude of the problem and then also propose uh, the kind of uh, uh, solutions uh, that uh, would work. And one of the solutions that uh, we came to, which uh, was further expanded um, when I was appointed uh, the chairman uh, of a presidential panel uh, put together uh, by uh, uh, General of um, a struggle around the presidency, uh, hits up uh, the, the um, uh, political system uh, so we recommended uh, that as an interim measure, uh, the presidency should be rotated uh, among uh, uh, six geopolitical zones as a way of uh, uh, lessening uh, the, the heat uh, generated uh, by the struggle uh, over uh, the presidency. Uh, and uh, around that same uh, policy, uh, we recommended um, uh, other things, uh, major uh, ministerial positions uh, to be uh, 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 spread uh, to uh, uh, major groups uh, so that uh, when um, important issues are being uh, discussed, at least everyone will feel uh, uh, that uh, one is being represented uh, uh, on uh, the, the high table uh, uh, for such policies. And we had thought uh, that uh, that kind of policy uh, will over time uh, uh, create uh, uh, conditions uh, of harmony, uh, economic development uh, will move faster, and the more uh, developed uh, uh, the economy uh, is, uh, the, 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 the greater the uh, confidence of people believing uh, that uh, living together in peace was in everyone's uh, uh, interest. Uh, after what time, uh, we thought um, uh, even the zoning system can be abandoned. Uh, uh, that uh, the zoning system where we help uh, create uh, economic development, uh, we create the commitment of people to, to the survival of uh, the uh, system. And at some point, uh, it may not uh, be needed. Uh, and uh, you can uh, go on uh, to uh, a, a full democracy uh, uh, without having uh, to, to uh, uh, divide the place. I initially, uh, 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 it would have worked, uh, but uh, uh, it was not um, uh, the uh, military government of the time uh, headed uh, by Babangidan. Uh, uh, did not accept uh, much of what we recommended that uh, was accepted uh, by the zoning a system was not, uh, but ultimately, uh, when the civilians came, uh, uh, the uh, uh, one of the parties uh, uh, adopted the, the zoning uh, system. Uh, the PDP uh, used uh, our zoning system 
uh, and it worked quite well for them uh, uh, until uh, the uh, uh, Yaradwa uh, uh, episode, uh, when you are making recommendations, you never can anticipate uh, all uh, possibilities. Uh, when uh, Yaradwa died uh, without um, uh, uh, completing uh, the uh, uh, zoning term uh, uh, for the Northwest, uh, it created a problem. Uh, and in the end, uh, the PDP uh, wasn't able to uh, handle the crisis. Uh, and that's how they lost uh, power. Uh, so that is one way um, I, I always compare with the outcome uh, of uh, some of the elections in Nigeria uh, uh, with uh, 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 Kenya. Uh, in uh, uh, two, 2007, uh, the, uh, it, it, the, the result uh, in the Nigerian uh, presidential election uh, was not satisfactory uh, to uh, Buhari, and uh, Buhari had wanted uh, a crisis, but the crisis did not come. Uh, you are now asking a, a, a Fulanese to uh, fight a crisis uh, between one Fulani and another Fulani. Uh, Buhari, Buhari here is Fulani, Yaradwa is Fulani. And uh, when Yaradwa wanted, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Buhari here wanted a crisis, it didn't work uh, because the Fulani wouldn't uh, respond. Whereas uh, in uh, Kenya, where the same kind of uh, uh, problem uh, led uh, to a considerable amount of bloodshed. Uh, and I have always argued that, that the reason why the Nigerian one uh, did not uh, produce uh, the kind of bloodshed uh, that happened uh, in Kenya uh, is because uh, of uh, the zoning system adopted by the PDP. Uh, now we are in a new uh, 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 situation uh, uh, between uh, the AP APC and uh, uh, PDP, yeah, who knows, uh, what will come out of it. Uh, originally, yeah, when uh, the uh, Constituent Assembly yeah, was um, uh, put uh, in place, uh, they had wanted uh, to put uh, the zoning system into the Constitution, uh, which if they did, uh, uh, then uh, much of uh, the crisis uh, we've had uh, may have been uh, averted uh, but but um, in, in the end, uh, self-interests, uh, uh, all sorts of uh, oppositions uh, made it impossible for it uh, to be put um, uh, into the constitution. Uh, it's a system that uh, we worked on considerably. Um, actually, the next time uh, I'm in Nigeria, uh, the surviving members of that panel, a lot of us, uh, uh, a lot of the members uh, died uh, uh, recently, but um, uh, the surviving members of the uh, uh, panel, uh, I'm going to find a way of uh, uh, getting them all together and really letting uh, the rest of Nigeria know uh, this important uh, document uh, that has been there. Uh, and uh, in our own judgment, uh, it's a document um, uh, uh, that can reduce the amount of crisis we've had in the country. And, and create the kind of peaceful uh, atmosphere yeah, that um, uh, socioeconomic development uh, requires. Thank you for that. You. Uh, it's been our pleasure today to have um, Professor Inikori with us. Um, I hope you have found this as enlightening as I have. As he was speaking about uh, people moving to the hilltops and therefore protecting themselves from the slave trade, but also uh, unfortunately protecting themselves from the interactions with other people that would have led to larger, more powerful, more centralized communities. I recall a particular chapter in the same book, uh, Fighting the Slave Trade, West African Strategies. Origi. Is that Origi? Uh, I don't remember the name of the author. Um, I think, but I think it's, but it's, a, it's about the Boland. Uh, I'm not sure if it was in Ebola, but there were particular people who were literally living within a mountain under a cave okay. um, where they were hiding. And I don't remember that it, which, which chapter it was, but okay. I thought that was fascinating. That's the, that's the general problem. Uh, the the uh, it's sort of freezing, 
for a moment, uh, for about 200 years, uh, peaceful interaction uh, was frozen. Uh, and that is a major explanation uh, for uh, the, the uh, multiplicity uh, of um, uh, uh, ethnicities uh, on the continent. Uh, when people don't interact, uh, uh, then you are not able uh, to uh, get uh, that kind uh, of expanded uh, uh, communities uh, with um, uh, a, 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 a cultural, common cultural elements, language, and all of that. So the less you interact, uh, the greater the uh, fragmentation. Uh, so one explanation, and I think uh, a number of historians have um, uh, applied uh, the same uh, uh, explanation as I'm uh, trying to do. Uh, one explanation for the fact uh, that the African continent uh, is the most uh, uh, politically fragmented uh, continent uh, uh, on the globe uh, is partly uh, the result uh, of uh, the Atlantic slave trade. Absolutely. And uh, I think if it was challenging in the 15th century to form a Pan-African identity or centralized uh, powers prior to the slave trade, how much more challenging it is this to tell somebody who has been perhaps hiding from other Africans um, for centuries that they are now an African and that we should unite. Another thing that I really enjoyed about your article, Professor, is the part where you talked about the prisoner's dilemma because the, the challenge for the prisoner, as I see it, is uh, they're both trying to defend their own self-interest, right? That is, they both have something to gain by both confessing, but they also have even more to gain by neither of them cooperating. Unfortunately, because they're not in communication, that does not occur. We have the benefit today of communication. And today we also face a myriad of prisoners' dilemmas as people of African descent whether those be trade deals, um, access to resources on the continent, and I would say throughout the diaspora. But because we have the option of communicating, we can perhaps handle this a little bit differently and recognizing that um, coalescing and centralizing our powers and resources together is the solution to uh, the new ways that we might be enslaved. I hope you have enjoyed this today. Please like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much.